Hi, my name is Patty Negri. I am a psychic, medium, and good witch. Um, I'm an LA native, born and raised here, can't imagine living anywhere else. I have been talking to dead people since I was three or four. Um, you might recognize me from the TV show Ghost Adventures or a lot of other things, but that's the one everybody watches. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, Leslie, for having me on. What do you think people's first impression of you is? Uh, <laughs> I, I think I, it's pretty much because I have this light, bright energy that I, I, I mean, I work on that, but I mean, it's just part of who I am. And um, I, I'll, it's a good question. I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's more towards positive. I mean, I am a little weird. I am a little out there and that's okay. That I, I thrive on that. Um, but I, I think as a rule, it's it's pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Or the, or the people who hate me. I, uh, <laughs> How can anyone hate you? You have such this awesome energy. And I know from the first time we connected, it was all positivity and all appreciation and nothing but gratitude oozing from even just a simple email. So I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I mean, I love life. I love people. People are the wildest, most creative, most powerful. That's why I like what you do, like getting people to tell their stories. People forget, they get all numb and worn out and it's like, people are awesome. <laughs> I happen to agree, um, but you know, you said you love people. Let's talk about your intro. Uh, let's talk about the fact that you mentioned you've been talking to dead people since you were about three. Yeah, I I just automat I knew that those so-called imaginary friends that little kids have weren't imaginary. They were real beings. Literally, I mean that classic stuff, the the the, the creature in the closet and under the bed, but they were real. They weren't that scary. They were I had conversations. I got real information that I could I, I honestly think kids really do have so much sight, so much intuition, can see through the veil. But in our modern Western non-mystical society, even our belief systems, our religion's not that mystical. We've taken the magic out, especially in our culture, that it's, oh, oh, that's your imagination, Johnny. Oh, that's your imagination. No, not always. There's a big, beautiful world out there. And, and I had this obsession with the dead, but it was never morbid or dark at all, at all. I literally did my first seance. I was seven or eight years old and I went in my little suburban house, the hallway that didn't have windows and doors and I stuffed towels under the door. So it was pitch black. And, and then I realized I didn't know any dead people. And I'm like, Marilyn Monroe, and John Kennedy, and anybody, you know, in the late sixties, a seven or eight year old knows. Um, and my windowless, lightless hallway filled with orbs, and lights, and things flying around. Uh, Sherry Jones and I went running out of the room, but I was really jumping up and down going, this is amazing. This is real, and we can control this. This is a realm that we can step into and step out of. And I've spent my entire life studying it, figuring it out, studying religions, philosophy, science, occult science, metaphysics, all these and taking it down to what I see, which is energy. And if you take everything down to that through line of energy, it, it doesn't matter what almost template you put on or word you put on, whether it's a typical Judeo-Christian religion or it's it's science based or it's new age or it's pay. If you look at the through lines through with everything, they're all the same. <laughs> I get what you're saying and I totally identify with it. And I think that's beautiful that you had that spirit pull you literally um, at such a young age. What yeah. did your parents say? <laughs> well, luckily, uh, my mom was, I, I, luckily I wasn't raised with any kind of firm strict belief system, actually any kind, because my grandfather was this great big almost evangelical atheist and didn't believe in religion at all. So we were raised without anything. Um, and so, but my mom came from a family of, of people who are gifted and she's like, oh yeah, grandma could do that. Oh yeah, grandma always knew when somebody was gonna do that. Oh yeah, grandma at the end of, oh yeah. And so it was not, and, and there was none of that where some people sadly get the, oh, that's evil or that's the devil, mm, quite the opposite. You know, so I was just lucky that that way it, it didn't get taught out of me. So my parents were good. I think that's so neat to hear yeah. the positive reinforcement 
um, that came to something that you really were passionate about. And I think that that happens a lot for kids is they bring a lot of things to their, to their parents or to the adults in their life and their continuation or passion for it lives or dies based on the reaction that they get. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause I work with people every day. My main job is one-on-one sessions, whatever with people. And we set up so many of our parameters and belief systems, especially our limiting belief system. So young, so long. It is when we're four five, six, those are in psychology, those formative years. And so much of it is limitations we put on. And so we have these little five, six, five, six year olds running us and with these faults some limited belief systems. Yeah. Ah, oh, wow. This is so fascinating to me. And I, I love your passion around it. And I love that energy. Like I even mentioned when we started talking, but I just love the energy you give to it and, and to it through others is what it sounds like to me. And I, um, you mentioned the one-on-one sessions, yeah. you referred to yourself as the good witch and you talked about <laughs> a show that you do. So I'd like to touch on those two things. Okay. Uh, yes. I like good witch because I only work in the light. I only work positive magic because not evil this or that, but you live in the world you create. And why would I live create curses and bad things? Because then you have to live in that world. Send love and you get love. That's how it works. So that's my good witch. And that, and I'm, I, me and Glenda, I, I'm a big fan of Wizard of Oz. I don't like white witch, black witch, because that has so many weird connotations. Good says a lot of things, all positive. Yes, I have the great big pink Glenda dress. I, I was like, ah. <laughs> So that that is why I'm Glenda. My car, my car is my broom. Is her name is Glenda. So yeah, that's why I'm the good witch over a white, gray, purple, green. This kind of witch, that kind of witch. I I just work with love and light. Um, and the ghost adventures. Yeah, I do a lot of different TV shows actually because I'm a Hollywood girl and I grew up. I used to keep the this magical side of myself very separate because I ran a production company that was very corporate. And they couldn't know that I danced around bonfires and talked to dead people. I thought it would not be good for my corporate image. But in 2008, when that big corporate crash happened and corporate entertainment, I used to produce big shows, became a dirty word and reality TV was going like this. And somebody asked me to do a seance, knowing my ability with seances on this show. I'm like, nope, can't do it. I won't do it. This is my private life. Please, please, please. Nope, can't do it. Won't do it. Please, please. Oh, what is this show? Well, it's called Mobile Home Disaster, and it's on a show called, it's on country music television. I'm like, nobody will watch that. <laughs> who's going to, it's, reality was new. Like, who's going to watch a show called Mobile Home Disaster on country music? Te- and I fell in love with the genre. It's like, oh my gosh, I get to be me. I get to give my message, my information in a fun way where they're just carrying me, color, you know, follow me around with three cameras. This is great, but no more because I have this other life and I don't think that's, so then it aired. And I remember my first call from one of my corporate clients. And of course she's like, it was like one of my big national bank clients. I'm like, she's like, I saw you on TV last night, Patty. And I'm like, oh, I'll never work for whoever again. And she's like, I didn't know you were into the paranormal. I love the paranormal. I'm like, yeah. Okay, so I'm out of the closet. I'm out of the, psychic closet i'm out of the broom closet this is so and that world continued to go up 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 and the corporate world this and this really was my passion so because i am hollywood girl trained everything and i'm legit in my work i just started doing the the, all the show from pit boss to beverly hills bond of i and my challenge is doing my competition shows master chef america's got talent getting on those because like okay i have to beat a hundred thousand people i can do it and i've done it three times um but the ghost adventures is the one people want i love working with zach and the guys i've been regularly on there not every week but regularly when they needed me um so six years now but it's such a challenge you don't know where you're going you don't know what you're going to get um at all like we just shot one at the, at the cecil hotel it's airing now this two hour special i i actually love it but i'm always scared to death not i'm not scared to death of the ghosts we're gonna meet or the serial killer ghosts i'm just going what if i'm not psychic today what if i get crickets what if i just stand there He's like because he just says what's going on i walked into that hotel and i all of a sudden this hotel is bombarding in on me i'm like oh my gosh and i'm going into trance state already and then there they show up all the guys and their cameras like 
you know, six guys and they go, okay, Patty, there's 14 floors, there's 700 rooms, they're all open, you tell us which ones to go to. Okay. I'm like... <laughs> okay. Faith, faith in the universe, push this button on the elevator, go. And then of course I led them to a room where I went right to the window, opened up the window, Zach's yelling at me. This is a spoiler alert, by the way. He's like, why are you? And I'm like going right for the window. Like, I gotta get out of here. I'm in the trap. I gotta get out of here. He's, and like, why is he yelling at me? Why, Zach doesn't yell at me. I'm in this whole other place. I led him right to a room where somebody jumped out that window and I walked in and opened the window and said I had to get out of here. Uh, he's like, sit down. I'm like, why is he? So, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. And then, and that was weird enough. And then I led him to another room and I'm, oh, I'm being, I could tell I'm being attacked horribly. And I'm, I, I couldn't get out of there. I didn't know what to knew, what to move. And I'm like, and I'm holding myself. I look like an eight-year-old has to pee really kind of holding yourself down there. I go, and I go, oh, don't go there. Don't go there. And I, I just felt whatever this person had felt going through. And, and again, Zach, and part of me is still conscious. I'm on TV and cameras and, and part of me, Zach's going, uh, where are you being attacked? What's going on? Where are you being attacked? And the still conscious part of me is like going, how, how do you say that body part on television? I'm like, lady parts or <laughs> something like that. And, and I led them to a room where sadly this woman who lived there had been raped and murdered. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's always an adventure and I love a challenge. So that's what that show is. My regular day-to-day -day work is completely different than that. Cause even my work with the other side, we, we're not gonna bring in, we're not going to the insane asylum or, or the prison or we're the serial killer. We're gonna bring it, talk to grandma and your spirit guides and the kid who died in, in grade school that you were best friends with. And it's, it's empowering and magical and good. I want to back up to something you said um, about the kind of split life you were living. You had <laughs> your corporate life and then you had, you know, your spirituality and your desire and what you even said as what you were passionate about. But clearly something was holding you back from sharing that with the world. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, as far as my public world, I, I was practicing pagan. I was a witch. I, I was, I was psychic, all the things I was growing up. It's just in me. I, I mean, I would just know if stuff grabbing rosemary off the bushes and stuffing it in my mom's wallet would give her more money. I just, I knew it and oh, that's what it does. Um, but I just thought that, you know, I grew up, it was in Hollywood. I was an actor in Hollywood and little stuff and working whatever and then I started my production company when I hit 30 because I was too old for Hollywood decades ago and and I loved but I loved production but it, it turned out very corporate I'm industrial shows and big song and dance extravaganzas how can they know my my other life is though though in a sense I did the same thing because I'm was still even in the corporate sending all about inspiring and empowering people because in my work what I've noticed working with people always is we, we tend to give our power away all the time we give our power away to fear we give our power away to other people. We give our power away to limiting personal belief systems, whether about life, ourselves, our belief system. And it's like, oh, it's so easy to grab it back. Again, we are these amazing beings. Yep. And a common phrase that people say, I mean, I do it, I'm sure you do it, is you made me feel X. Yeah. Right. And we can't control what other people do, no matter how much we think we can, but we can 100% control how we let it affect us. And as soon as we do let them, you made me this, we're a victim. And when you're a victim, you have no power. I've given it away. But if you go, okay, I have allowed you to do this to me. I've, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. When I take responsibility, then I can change it. 100%. A hundred percent. And I love that you help people to get their power back and to be empowered yeah. and to be confident in owning their story and owning, you know, and that's something that I love doing with this show is getting yeah. people to, to share their story and, and know that there's people out there that identify with them and they're not alone in their journey. And everyone is someone and your story is important. Yeah. And 
you know, you're, you're getting stories from both sides, you know, you're connecting with past and present. And, you know, the, you said something earlier is getting to live in the moment. And the only truth is in the present and we need to be, be here. And, and it's so great to see that you're able to now be wholly present and own who Patty is and get to do <laughs> what you're passionate about. I, I love that. And I'm glad that you don't have to um, choose anymore. And, you know, I do have a question about that. Did you ever find yourself, um, quote unquote, like slipping? Like, did you ever say something that afterwards you went, uh oh, I may have just spilled the beans? <laughs> um probably not that anybody caught because again people don't listen <laughs> we're all asleep at the wheel phoned in automatic pilot through by by rope by all these words it's like and, and that's why i'm about waking people up too. wake up wake up consciousness i think that's what this part of this whole pandemic is about what wake up call it was the universe going wake up now stand, stand in the corner of your room till you figure it out <laughs> You have such an exciting, ah. exciting story and, and such a unique background and, and history to where your journey has taken you. What is something that would surprise people to know about you? Well, probably, and it's getting known now because again, even in my corporate world, I wasn't like a corporate person. I, well, I think the funny thing is that because I seem to sew together and I know all this stuff, I'm the most indecisive person in the world, <laughs> not on big things. I can make life decisions for, but what to have for dinner, what movie to see. I can't, I'm a Libra. I don't know. My husband, it drives him crazy. Can you just pick? I can't. <laughs> so that is surprising. And the other thing is that, um, I'm starting a network because people, I, I'm gray. I'm, I'm, yeah, people, I'm, I'm positive, but I, people don't think of me as that focused. I'm a little scattered. I'm starting a network, my own network. I mean, like a Netflix, but it's called Paraflix. I have two partners and we launch in less than two weeks or whenever this airs, I don't know. So I've got my corporate world going about the spiritual world. Ah, I threw them all together. What an awesome combination and how fulfilling that must be for you to really have come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a trip. It's called Paraflix, P-A-R-A-F-L-I-X-X.com. It's going to be a streaming video on demand, like Netflix, only less expensive. Um, it, it, and it launches on the 21st of March. Uh, well, I have kept you sharing your story for quite some time and you've shared so many great, amazing things. Before I ask you the final question to close out this conversation, okay. is there anything that you would like to share that you would like people to know before I close things out? Um, I just, I, I think magic is everywhere. We just have to look sometimes. It's everywhere, you are going to work, it's their magic magic and all that it means is everywhere and it, it's as easy as you allow it or hard as you make it go for easy i like that i definitely i'm going to take that with me forward from this conversation go for it magic's sure. everywhere easy yeah i love that <laughs> so patty as you are on your new network as you mm -hmm. are on the shows if zach calls you as you are <laughs> doing your individual interactions if you have the opportunity to hold up a sign that says one thing about Patty, what would you want people to know about you? Love, just love. 